Well, I hope you enjoyed your two weeks paid vacation. <laughs> <laughs> it was just two weekends full of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and there what was did no we payment. Do? We, did, <laughs> we did camping. Oh, and then it was Mother's Day, the one before. Yeah, that's right. Hey, Hammy Ham. Hey. Hey. Oh, I saw some nice RVs yesterday. Really makes me want one. Oh, we Especially went, when you see, get in it. And that's, wow, well, fuck, some of those RVs. <laughs> I went into the RV store to get some, some, because you got to use special teepee in the, in the shitter in there. Uh-huh. And uh, I went in to get a four-pack of that. I was like, ooh, I'll take a walk through this one. Yep. <laughs> my God. <laughs> it's nicer than my house. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, what kind they of are. RV has a hot tub in the back? Oh, really? I never saw that. Hot, hot tub in the back. It's got an upstairs balcony. Nice. Both of the sides slide out, so it's like it ends up being twice as wide. Cleaning, he was in an RV this a couple a weekend or so ago with a hot tub in the back and then a balcony up top. It and was we're insane. invited? <laughs> it was insane. Oh, yeah. $480,000. For a – no. The one Half I saw. A million dollars. This, the one I saw was fifty, almost fifty percent off. Oh wow! Um, I think it had like a couple miles on it. See, we bought we bought a used trailer. We bought a little twenty-two foot ah, trailer. I yeah, call I it. So. I call it little. It's twenty-two feet long. <laughs> yeah. Compared to a tent trailer, it's a giant. But of course, a tent trailer. Those are not even worth it. Pop-ups. Hey, you know what? They they've got tent trailers that are kick ass now. The the, the RV store had them as they got AC, they got uh -huh. everything. I don't yeah, know. This, I this, can't justify this, that. I'd rather just have my uh this piece RV of that, nylon. Yeah, that expensive RV when you camp it and you park, mm -hmm. you just press a button and and uh two LCD or LED mm -hmm. TVs come down in front of the uh, the driver's windows <laughs> and you have that, the the giant television in the front. If, if you're think... sitting outside by the fire, you can press a button yes. and, a, and a TV slides out the side. Uh, that's the one. I, I saw one like that. It had four it was, TVs in it. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? That's Opulent. not even camping anymore. I know. That's, that's, <laughs> palace, a, on that's a palace on wheels. Yeah. You know what we'll get? We'll get umbrellas and the Oculus, and we'll just pretend we're there. <laughs> just pretend you're there. <laughs> Where are you? I'm in the shitter. Don't look. <laughs> but it seems like I'm camping. <laughs> oh, what happened, Breezy? Starting uh, this video. For some reason, I was on the stream, and it didn't show my video, so I just figured I had a problem. Oh, I could see your video. Uh, no, yeah, I, could. I could see it. I was just a bit confused. Could I? Maybe I could. You were a bit confused. I'm scared now, because if you're confused, I got no hope. <laughs> we're holding yeah, out that like you're the intelligent one. <laughs> there you go. It's working. It's all good. It's fine. <laughs> opener, opener. Where far are thou opener? Topics. I don't know how to... Read. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> well, with this news... <laughs> The new Skype layout. How do you? you how don't. do you text chat in the video? There used to be a little thing, and you'd click it, and then the little chat would pop up below it. It's there. Here, does this help? You nope. should have a little bubble window where to the left of the nope. video window. <laughs> nope. <Yeah. laughs> I heard a... it go doop. So on the bottom of the window, the video window, there's uh, a toolbar. It's not the yeah. It's not there. It used to be there, but this oh. whole Skype layout is different on on it now. It updated. It looks like an iPhone. Oh no! All of my video just disappeared. Please try again later. Yeah, group video is unavailable at this moment. What are you talking about? It's unavailable. You guys are still right here. But me too. <laughs> and now it's coming back. Yeah, I had to turn it back on. Is this what we get for our quote unquote free video now? Yeah. Microsoft's awesomeness. Oh, and I got another video popping up over here. What is this all about? Look at that. <laughs> this is uh, this this, is this way they can keep giving you commercials as they uh, as you here. log into video all oh, the time. By the way, I do have something for the uh, that uh, annoying ad banner. If you're interested, uh, because when you go to type as you're typing, sometimes an ad banner comes up and kicks you out of the chat. Uh huh. All right, where's that link? Uh, 
uh, get rid of the new Skype banner. All right, here it is. Uh, for all the listeners as well. There you go. Oh. Good, I could use a fix like that. Jeez. It's... I don't like how chat doesn't auto-scroll anymore. Oh, thanks. You put it in something that I heard beep and I can't get to. <laughs> so if you don't see that toolbar, uh, put your cursor towards the bottom where it should be, and it might... Yep. It, it pops up the toolbar, but there's nothing there to get the chat. So on the, the very leftmost icon, not is the video camera. icon, not the camera, but even further left, because that should be center. There isn't. You, there's no icon? No, I go camera, microphone, add participants, and hang the fuck up. Yes, but far, far left to that, as far left as you can go. Trust yeah. me, there's nothing there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me hide the messaging. Click anywhere. And now I'll show it again. Okay, yeah, it works for me. All right. I think you just uh, need a new computer. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll buy one right now. <laughs> oh, maybe you should get a Mac. Yeah, that'll solve it. <laughs> oh, my God. You got to jump through some hoops to do this. All right. You don't do it now. I'm going to just start the show, unless you want to do it during the show. <laughs> no, I definitely don't want to mess crap up. All right, it's May 25th, 2014, and you're watching Mods on Air. Two FPS, three RPGs, and five sim-type games. Yeah. I think you'd be able to come up with one here. I'm actually pulling this one hard. Ask all the people that need hacks to play Call of Duty. I can hear you groaning oh, inwardly yeah. every time sims mention you just cringing. Oh. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 427 of Mods on Air, bringing you the weekend gaming news as moderators and developers and gamers ourselves. I am Foil Man, and also on the show today we have with us Strider. Hello, welcome back, Strider. Hello, everybody. Hello, and Ham is with us. Hello, Ham. Hey, everybody. Hey, and Breezy made it over. Hey, Breezy. Yo. So, before we begin, let me remind you all that this show is recorded live. Stuff will happen, it may be offensive, and that is the point. Uh, so, leave if that's going to be a problem adult topics and whatnot but anyway we're going to just talk about the weekend news and what we think about it you may not agree so if yeah, you don't we... send us an email over at mailbag at mods on air .com and we'll send you a thank you gift <laughs> <laughs> send you a thank you gift <laughs> all right <laughs> one thank you gift coming here's a thumbtack <laughs> it's a do-it-yourself thumbtack it's a pin and some plastic you have to put it together mm. it's like a <laughs> development kit <laughs> thumbtack development kits Thumb, get, i wonder if there's a book thumbtacks for dummies <laughs> the pointy end goes in the wall not your thumb Axe even the wrong thumb thumb tack, you shouldn't put the tack in your thumb <laughs> no no It'd okay anyway <laughs> Pro tip. <laughs> Pro tip. <laughs> so as most of you know, or should know, we do stream over on Twitch, twitch.tv. Uh, we've been doing it ever since Stick'em uh, got raped or whatever it was that they did. <laughs> um, and yeah, went bust. And uh, now we hear that Google might be buying Twitch. Which may or may not. ultimate Bond villain, you know, sort of... <laughs> sum of money one mm. billion dollars yeah that's the rumor one billion dollars i don't know if this is a good thing or bad thing i mean we have we can do quote unquote live streaming through youtube uh basically what that means is it's a google hangout which is why we're not doing it now <laughs> we have no friends so why would we want to hang out <laughs> the, the problem well you can't get any you can't get any exposure unless no. somebody is looking for it and tunes in mm -hmm. um twitch doesn't really help us either in that sense nope. um people have to get here by getting here <laughs> skype uh, doesn't help either <laughs> skype doesn't help stick em used to stick em, it used to be great because stick em was a place to stream micro market types of shows like ours and other podcasts and mm -hmm. all kinds of weird thing people doing things and the video stopped again yeah it did yeah it has that's why i said <laughs> skype doesn't help thanks skype um no idea why it's doing but that today. It's uh, 
it, it seems odd. I know, I think I know the reason why, or part of the reason why, is because Microsoft has integrated stream to YouTube on their Xbox One. And hmm. Google is looking for something that counters that. And in doing so, they have to move away from YouTube and create their own type of service. Because mm-hmm. I think Microsoft or Google is poising itself to kick Microsoft's ass in the coming years um, with what it offers and and be that be that software, be that hardware. They are looking to dethrone Microsoft because people don't say, "Hey, let me let me search the internet for that anymore." It's all let me Google that. Mm-hmm. You know, no one says, "Hey, let me Bing that." Well, Nobody ugh. said who <laughs> wants to. No one has ever said. That. No one has ever, ever. said. Ever. <laughs> so I, I I believe that that's probably one of the reasons why they're looking at doing this. Um, same same as Facebook acquiring Oculus and and hardware and things like that. They are looking to fill a void that that everybody sees coming from Microsoft because Microsoft has made clear that they are going to be a um, phone slash handheld uh, developer and move away from everything that made them billions of dollars yeah. because obviously they've they figured they've made too much money. I don't I don't know the reasoning <laughs> behind that, but someone someone like just totally shit the bed and mm-hmm. got up with a totally retarded idea and they've been running with it for the last uh, five years six years they've yeah. been just slowly destroying their yeah themselves and themselves <laughs> yeah they have it's they can only blame themselves in this case for everything that's gone wrong <laughs> well it, twitch is really just a bunch of inexperienced people that were trying that started to create a server service it started to take off uh, they kept those inexperienced people working, working hard, I think. Uh, yeah. They did a very good job for who they were. And now it's time to, you know, somebody came along with a billion dollar check. I'd sign it. Here's yeah. that I don't understand. Yeah. If, if Google's looking for something, mm-hmm. it shouldn't be Twitch. Google should look at <clears throat> buying what, what's left of Stick'em, buying that... But Twitch That's has all the users. Twitch has the foot in the door for PlayStation and those other things. Yeah. Twitch has it. Twitch has it because Stick'em disappeared. Yes. And Twitch, Twitch was supposed to be a game streaming service, and all its and realistically, it started. Twitch was just in TV. Yes. That's what Twitch was. Yeah. And it and it went, quote unquote, commercial because. During when when it was known as Justin TV, that's when Stickem was kicking ass. Right. And, Absolutely right. And it it they decided to to sort of focus on gaming, and realistically, it isn't it the service that we get from Twitch and the service that anybody is able to get from Twitch is not that great compared to what we got from Stickem. And I'm just I'm just saying that hmm. Stickem. You could say, "All right, I want to. I want to see who's streaming what in games," mm-hmm. and you could go there. I want to. Mm-hmm. I want to go to podcasts. I want to go to whatever you, you know. Mm-hmm. And it broke it down to categories. You're Twitch right. is just a mumble jumble that only allows you to break it into what games you're streaming. Yes. You want League of Legends? There you go. You want something other than a game? You're not going to find it. Yeah, you're not going to find it. And that's. I. I don't. I would like to see. That's that side of what was available in Stick'em mm-hmm. brought we, back. We talk about games every week, and on Stick'em we were getting a thousand viewers a week, at least. Yeah. Yeah. Now we don't. <laughs> <laughs> and it's and essentially that was because overnight Stick'em shut its doors. We didn't know anything about it. We were left scrambling to find a new place to to broadcast. And it's how do you get that word of mouth back out where we are now? Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. Well, you so, do it through a, a Google acquisition, apparently. <laughs> yeah, but what's Google going to do with it? If it stays as just a game streaming service, it's well, it's not going to go anywhere. It's the same as this e e sports. These people <laughs> that play video games are not athletes. 
and and mm. people need to stop treating them as such because that's just promoting this this 12 year olds mentality of i get to do whatever i want but i've got a jersey <laughs> that, that says says my paint on the back that's the thing though twitch has all, all the um like the esports competitions on it so that's what brings in a lot of people to twitch like every sort of counter-strike map they're watching things like that has always got up to hundreds of thousands of people watching so those sort of channels are very popular. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We we know how this is going to start. It's it always every company acquisition always starts the same way. We bought the service because we thought it was great. We're going to leave everything the exact same way as it was. We aren't going to interfere with anything. And then slowly over time, they change one thing and another thing and another thing. And it's a completely H- different service. H- hang on now, because you said every acquisition starts this way. And when Microsoft bought Skype, it went to shit immediately. It well, they wasn't said. <laughs> nothing. They, said. they didn't even say it's going to stay the same. It's like, yeah, we bought it. Now we're going to fuck it up. Yeah, the you first realize thing why... we're going to do is fuck it up. You realize why we're having video issues now is because uh, a couple weeks ago, Microsoft decided that you no longer have to pay for an account in order to have group video streaming because mm-hmm. people were having issues when it came to consoles and having group video. So now to relieve that issue, it's now free. And that's why suddenly they're changing something on their end and we keep having video stream issues. <laughs> wow. Fun times. <laughs> but do you think uh, Google will actually put any of their people onto Twitch if they take it over? Yeah. Because Twitch has potential to be good, but maybe it just needs you know some experience from Google to yes. do that. They will, because the way Google works is uh, similar to, I can't remember what the other company is. Anyway, uh, it's very similar to uh, Valve. Uh, people are allowed to elect what group they work with, and if that group makes money, they make money. So initially, this project will probably have the potential of making money, and people might jump on board. If it starts to fail, it will completely fail. Yeah. It'll get shuttered. Mm-hmm. It's- there's nothing I dislike more than the companies that get acquired, have a great service, they get acquired, and then, uh, and then whatever parent company that acquired them, whatever ideas they had that don't work out, and so just the company fails. And it's, it's sort of this weird thing where it's like, this company was doing fine all along, and then you came along and ruined it, literally killed the company by, by acquiring it and putting failed ideas um, in place of something that worked. This will open the door for someone else to step in, though, which might yep. mean a good thing. True. Yeah. And what are they going to call it? Twoogle? Twitch? <laughs> it, don't, it doesn't change name. They don't change names over at Google, I don't think. No, I don't know. Google will be in there somehow. A service by Google or something? Yeah. Google Docs. It'll be Google Twitch. Google. Like Twitch. Honestly, I whoever thought of that name? Twitch. <laughs> Well, that, now there's uh, because it was all stuttery, jittery video. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, well, uh, there's also the news this week. What, hang on, how long until we start having issues where Microsoft-based products aren't going to work with Google-based products? It has. I, I e I e Google won't open without some sort of proxy on a on a Microsoft-enabled thing or for example, I don't think it Twitch. can happen nope you know why because uh, US Congress will turn around and say no you can't do that just like they've done with um, what what they did that with something else like you, you can't inst- uh, force people to use Internet Explorer so here they're not gonna they're gonna be like you can't force them not to be able to use something that they already use so much of it's like the opposite of monopoly <laughs> <laughs> it's the opposite of monopoly <laughs> Multiopoly. Yeah. <laughs> Unopoly. Uh-huh. Unopoly. Yeah, yeah. The new game, Unopoly. <laughs> you give everything Sell all your properties as quick as mm-hmm. possible. And that's the only because it's a big service. Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> that's the catch. <laughs> Sorry, Ham. <laughs> oh, no, wait. You're Chicago-based. You don't care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, 
Uh, jumping over to uh, what's going on with Steam. Steam says that you can now manage your games and stuff remotely. In other words, if you have a computer in the other room, you can r install it from this room. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh... the, the whole idea is that if you have a Steam box under your TV and you're sitting at your computer and you're like, oh, I want to play this game, you don't have to go into the TV and start logging in and scrolling through and saying, oh, okay, let's install this game. No, you can sit at your computer here and you can say, okay, start installing over there. So that when I when I'm ready, I can go in there and start playing. I thought it was just remote access. It's remote access. Ooh, something is new. Is that all this is? I think all that is all this is 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 your um, uh, VNC sort of. Hmm? <clears throat> uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I thought this was just streaming, so you don't actually install anything on a, on a different system. You just uh... although I, actually I thought the feature of of telling it of saying that you logging in somewhere and then um, saying it install on whatever PC uh, I thought that feature came out a while ago but I never did see it anywhere in the client. Mm -hmm. Well, and... I know that this does talk about in home streaming like you like that's what I thought it was about too. But then when I started reading what they're talking about here, they're really just talking about remote installing. Yeah, I, I swear that feature was at very at the very least talked about long ago, and I just never saw anything on the client. I just, I forgot about it, but I see it here too in the article. So, in other words, it's non-news. Why are we talking about non-news? Okay. <laughs> well, on a topic of Steam boxes, Amazon is still trying to do their Fire TV where you can play those, you know, handheld Android games. But what oh, they'll good. do is if you give them some money ahead of, right now, they'll send you the box and you can play with it. And if you don't like it within 30 days, send it back kind of deal. Just yeah. pay separate shipping handling. But wait, there's more. <laughs> <clears throat> I... That's still not going to get me to go. I'm not going to do it. I don't see a reason to even try. Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. Agreed. All right. Yeah. Thank you, but no thank you. Here's another interesting one. YouTube is soon going to start allowing crowdfund projects. Two words. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> it's YouTube's idea of Kickstarter. Is really Fuck that. Exciting. Crowds <laughs> crowdfunding is a bunch of shit, and all you fucking sheep that keep giving money to people... Stop it. Stop allowing people to virtually panhandle. It's bullshit. Get a fucking job, you lazy bastards. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> so they're going I, I don't I don't understand how YouTube's gonna get away with it because YouTube is Google. So how is Google going to justify the idea of you know YouTube is helping Google? them helping people steal money? Yeah. Google owns YouTube. This right. is this is a this is just a, a ploy to put Google Wallet um, payment system out front because hmm. that's to how people steal. They're collect money to help people steal. That's what <laughs> Kickstarter is. <laughs> <sighs> All right, I, I don't know. I don't, uh, I don't know I don't, what to tell you. I don't know. I I've, I'm not sure how to feel about that. I just. I, I know how it. I feel about it. <laughs> <laughs> we all know yeah, how Strider how feels. Feel about it. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. This this crowdfunding phenomenon that's that's just it 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 needs to go away because it's all it's done now is it's created such a watered down way for people. Like if it, you used to have an idea and you'd go out and say, "Hey, I've got this great idea. I want to." get some investors in it and and make this idea a reality what happens it's shit the bed now because there is just such an inundation of useless crap out there and people are giving away their money for no reason it's it's insane i just don't understand what people's fascination is with giving away money for nothing you're not investing in anything you're just here here's Here's twenty dollars. Tell you what, walk up and down the streets and give twenty bucks to the, every person you meet. Because that's essentially what you're doing. You're just fucking giving away money. 
you know, if you're going to give 20 bucks, I have we'll give it to give away. Yeah, well, exactly. Didn't we say this before? If you're going to give away money, give it to us. Send it in. We'll do something <laughs> put fun it with to it. Good use. Yeah. <laughs> mm hmm. We should have okay. something like this. Crap! <laughs> <laughs> Kickstart Mots on here. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. We're going to tube coin mods on there. How long? Yeah. <laughs> I just, I just, uh, something in my, my noggin there. How long until someone needs a heart transplant and they put it on Kickstarter and they call it Kickstart My Heart? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the idea. Well, it'll only become news when it fails. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy dies. And dies after failed Kickstarter. <laughs> Kickstart my heart attack. <laughs> People are ironically heartless. Ha! Ah. Ah. Don't be heartless. Open your wallets and your hearts today. <laughs> oh. oh it's gonna that was that just fucking sells horrible. Itself. Who mm -hmm. writes this crap? <laughs> <laughs> Foil's sitting there like... Yeah, and I play with these guys. <laughs> uh, all right, over to Kickstarter. There is that uh, game that we've talked about before, the one from Harmonix, where they're remaking. Oh, we're gonna skip. What? Which Did one? I skip some? What? What? I Which thought one? we went from crowdfunding to. Okay. Yep. That's fine. That one. Sorry. Yeah. So uh, we have a uh, the Harmonix game, which is Amplitude, which is supposed to be a remake or something of a of an old game and they threw it up on kickstarter for seven hundred and seventy five thousand dollars because that's how much it takes to remake a music game like this uh, um and they didn't make the goal yet right oh oh big What's... rich company didn't get people giving them money <laughs> oh and it's your fault you should feel horrible <laughs> i on. wonder if it's our fault and and i don't feel horrible I don't. This is this is you're you're a fucking giant company. If if you think this game is worth making, make it. If you're going to say, "Oh, I'm going to crowdfund this game and it's going to be distributed and given away for free," then that's different. But you're asking people to pay your salary to make a game that you're then going to charge people for and make money off of. Eat shit and die. Mhm. Mm yeah. <laughs> So, That's I mean, why it's, it's struggling. People are waking up. It made it. it I'm, I went to the Kickstarter oh, page it now. Oh. It had made it. It made it two days ago. In the ago. last two days, it made yeah. it. Yeah. And I bet you any money that it made it by a giant corporate donation from the mothership. <laughs> oh, it could. You. Yeah, you're right. It could do that. Yes. Yeah. So Thank you, $500,000 donations from from. Idiot. Like, if if one half of a million people gave a dollar each, we can have a <laughs> Like, fuck off. This is, what's what's the uh, what's the game that's on PC? Uh, it's it's a music game. It's um, you can use your own music. Surf? Audio surf. surf. Yeah, this is like audio. It looks like audio surf plus Guitar Hero. Um, Strider should know because he likes those kind of games. I don't know. Audio surf is fun. I didn't really care for Audio Surf 2, but Audio Surf is fun. I I picture that being a huge money maker on the handhelds, uh, like iPhones and stuff, because Audio Surf? it's yeah, because it's loaded with your your iPhone's already loaded with your music, so you just sit there and you play your music on the bus. That is the type of thing that I see as a money making thing. Now someone's going to put that on Kickstarter. Yep. <laughs> I need a million dollars to make this happen. Yeah, I need a million dollars to make this happen. So I can charge you ninety nine cents to download it. Let's all put the put the put it up on Kickstarter and we'll each put it for a little less than the other. And we'll see which one gets funded. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll throw up a Kickstarter to kickstart. So that if people give us money, we'll give it to the Kickstarter fund that's trying to make it. Yeah, I I just I don't understand it's like is harmonics that they go bankrupt? Why do they need? Why do they? Why did they need to do this? Because Activision's not footing their bill anymore. They didn't go bankrupt. It's just 
they're they're making a game that obviously nobody wants that they they pitch to the investors the investor says yeah i don't think so so they're like yeah well we're going to make it anyways we'll we'll make it and we'll make a bunch of money from somebody else yeah let's let's uh let's make it but let's not have any risk associated whatsoever yeah and to me that's just i i i disagree with that entire thought process yeah to to dump the risk on everyone else and then and, charge them for it after the project's completed. Yeah. So either either way they win. They if the game is not successful, they didn't lose any money. They lost someone else's money. And if it is successful, well they just got more money because they're charging for it. It's that it's makes definitely them a win of some sort, doesn't it? What? That makes them whores of some sort. In a way. <laughs> game whores. In, in a lot of ways. <laughs> Industry whores. Industrial whores. That's a lot of whores. A lot of whores. Hmm. That's a show I'd help support. Um, we have uh, going on to some other games. Now, I don't know if you guys out there listening remember when we went over to PAX two years ago and we played a game called Extraction, which mm -hmm. seemed like fun, exciting, and everything like that. Well, I don't think I, re I don't remember mentioning it, but the day we got back, they renamed the game to Dirty Bomb. <laughs> Uh, Back you know, to Dirty Bomb, because right. it was originally called Dirty Bomb. Uh, yeah. And... <laughs> yeah, I don't understand that logic, but that's what they did. And this is what it's turned into. If you see some of this art that I'm throwing up there, I don't know what I'm looking at. The game's still in development. There yeah. may be an alpha... A closed. Oh, there's closed, closed beta registration closed, closed going beta. on. Closed beta. Wasn't that closed beta? It was supposed to come out ages ago. Yeah. yeah. Now We were supposed to get keys to it, too. Now, unfortunately, there's an NDA when you play said closed beta. Um, what I can maybe say is that it is very bleakly resembling the game that we played at PAX. Oh, okay. So it's not what it was. It's... Uh, uh, and did you like it when you played it at PAX? Oh, yes. it was fantastic at PAX. He and Walshie played it and enjoyed it quite a bit. It was uh, it was a very actiony based, uh, actiony team based uh, first person shooter. It's on the um, Unreal Three engine, I believe. And what impressed me the most about it was that it did not look plasticky at all. To achieve this, it looks a little plasticky now. Uh, I can't say anything. Well, I'm, pl I'm pl based on the video that I'm showing here that I took from YouTube. Hi, I'm Dave Johnston. And it looks plasticky. A little plastic. It looks more cartoony than it email. used to. I would often connect to service myself to see exactly how players were playing it. But there's only so much. So it looks like they're trying to lean to more towards TF2. They are. They are. Um, Echo tracks every game session in an I'm not asking you to say anything. I'm just looking at the video and making an assumption. Yeah. <laughs> Echo then combines all of this it's, it's, it's definitely allowing us to easily it's definitely i mean it's the it's the same history game style data, i guess but it's definitely not as polished it's almost like examples. they said you know what this game is too good for the free to play because that's what they're shooting for was free to play it's not free to play anymore i don't know about that no no it's still free to play but it was too good uh, like it, it, it really looked good at PAX. Yeah. And uh, it's almost like they said, okay, if it's going to be free to play, we better back this the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, but if you've already done it, that wouldn't make any sense. If you've already made the game look like that, well, they made yourself made more money to revert it. Uh, not necessarily, because the way that uh, the way you make Unreal look unplasticky is by really really spending a lot of time in level editing and well i don't know about level editing so much as shader shader editing yeah. well it's but that's the thing it's the shaders it's the level editing it's making sure your light settings are just right you're diffusing them properly and all that and that takes lots and lots of time the team were then able to start reducing it but by uh, the clip yeah we'll, we'll probably talk more about it in the future yeah. i no i had not played it at pax i've only gotten a chance to play half of one match um or I, no i've played i guess one and a half matches um 
I couldn't really get a, a solid understanding of everything. Um, it seemed okay. It just seemed okay. Um, it looked like I could have a lot of fun with it, but I just need to spend more time with it before I can really develop a, a good opinion, a good solid opinion of it. Right now, at the alpha stage. One word, Maxon. That's unfortunately that was what everybody said when, uh, and I I wasn't uh, I wasn't fully aware of. Um, but they they had said, oh, X Nexon's distributing it. It's gonna be shit, and and I, I don't know. Hopefully, it's not going to be shit. But that's essentially what uh, what everybody was saying when when. Uh, we found out who was distributing it. was like, oh, um, hello. <laughs> what happened like, to those? This uh, game is awesome. This game is awesome. It's like, oh, next one's distributed. It's like, whoa. What happened to the keys they promised us? Is I there any word on that? See, and that's, I don't understand how Ham got keys. And we, and yeah. none of us I did. did. Yeah, I didn't get one. That's, Ham was, wasn't even there. Weird. <laughs> we weren't even just, there, man. <laughs> you don't even know. <laughs> you don't even I know. <laughs> I got an email just saying, here's your invite to, to Dirty Bomb. And I was just, what? I, and I was so sure that you all had gotten it because yeah. I had gotten one, but clearly not. It's weird. I don't and I've got one more key uh, to go out to one of you. Fight to the death. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> whoever whoever he likes the most is. Fake <laughs> loves. Send cookies. Is that it? Oh, it's a cookie bid. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Anyway, all right. Moving on. Uh, Evolve is supposed to be released in October. That's the game where you have uh, four against one. Four so people soon. against one giant. So we have a, 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 a time at which to expect this game to show up on Xbox One. What? And entertainment systems from Microsoft, PlayStation. That's a weird way to phrase it. There must be an Xbox One special push, and everybody else is an afterthought. Call, but you can't call, you can't call Microsoft's Xbox One a gaming system. It's an entertainment system. Yeah. Especially That's since they here. they threw away the Connect. Yeah. <laughs> threw away the Connect. Pretty soon you won't need a controller because it's just going to sit there and connect, collect dust, connect dust. <laughs> The, you know, uh, didn't I think we talked about it last week though? They took the connect and they boot. They booted it. It's gone. So how do you talk to it? You don't. How do you snap? You don't. Well, now it just shows mess. you images. You don't play any games. That's right. I wonder if I have anything to talk about regarding that. Because I went to a Microsoft meeting in Chicago this week. I was there for a night. Um. Hmm. And it was that exciting. Oh, I'll tell you. <laughs> that you have nothing to say about it. <laughs> I must have something to say. Oh, well, let's this see. is a waste of time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It kind of felt like it. But uh, so, I'm, I'm, I'm looking up my notes. I have like um. You, go, you guys talked notes. about this last week? or No, this happened last This, this is week. breaking news. I went there on t I went over Tuesday night and, what, and had a conference on a... Yeah, it was for the, wasn't it for the Xbox, uh, the indie developers program? I, I know there was something in Chicago, and I was considering going back Gosh, for the meeting. Yes, Enough. that is what it was for. And yeah, they start off, know. they start off the whole meeting with, um, with not why you should use it, but um, ways of implementation. In other words, they went up there and said, okay, so we're going to show you how to make an Xbox One game. So we're going to program this and this and then you can do this and this is how this works and half the people, maybe more than half the people are in there, you could see are falling asleep as they're doing this. And at the end of that hour, they're like, okay, and then here was a, here's, we're going to run it. That's oh, like an hour? The, the guy looks over. Oh, I didn't know we were using this SDK. Okay, I guess a demo won't play for you. So then what? they go on to the next guy who's showing another demo and uh, for something else. And he's like, oh. Um, the demo systems doesn't seem to be working, so I can't show it to you. Then later on that day, Unity does the same thing. Oh, I didn't realize uh, this it was going to be like this, so I can't show you our demo. Wow. The only thing they could show us was how well the Kinect picks up your skeleton, which is basically what they've shown at all the conferences already. Um, and they're getting rid of the Kinect. <laughs> no. <laughs> so here's the thing. They're uncoupling it. Go. They're uncoupling the Kinect from the Xbox One. Yeah, that's yeah. And and selling it for three ninety nine. Mm -hmm. That matches the price of the PS Four. 
That's as good then as getting rid of it. you have to buy the Kinect to use all the features of Xbox One. <laughs> it's a marketing gimmick. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, here's the Wii console. You get no Wii controllers, but here's the console. <laughs> it's cheaper. Oh, you got to buy a controller. Yeah, they're 99 bucks each. But you want to play with friends? Oh. <laughs> tis, I think tis. that. Hmm? I think next week they're going to announce that the Kinect 2 for Windows is available for sale. So if you can develop for that, you can develop for Xbox. Of course, again, they can, it won't be on the Xbox because nobody will have one. That's all we need. A whole bunch of fat people sitting there playing <laughs> yeah. computer but games it, on Kinect. Uh, Pick they, up they, my skeleton, bitches! <laughs> they were pushing the idea of the Glass app, which is available on all phones, not just Windows Phone. They have a Glass app. Now, what the Glass app is, is, is it can become a companion application, meaning you can make a game and use it just like that Wii U controller with the screen on it. So you can integrate it. You can integrate your game in any which way that you want. It could become a mini-map. It could become a player two strategy for the enemy or whatever. So it's kind of neat that you can do that with any Xbox game and just throw some SDK stuff together and build, build an app for any mobile device. That's pretty cool. Mm. It's it's cool, but it it has to. I think it really has to make itself uh, worthwhile with some examples, some some greatly or well done imp implemented examples. Because um, right now, I just it definitely seems like a me too product, mm -hmm. and and the first me is uh, is not really making a great example of its purpose either. But if anybody out there wants to get started, download Visual Studio Express for Windows Desktop, build a 64-bit C++ DirectX 11 Win32 game without DirectX SDK on Windows 7, but with on Windows 8, and you are ready to go. Coming soon on Kickstarter, hmm. Foil's <laughs> promo speech that just occurred. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. So that was that. All right. Sweet. Very glad I didn't go. Yeah. Uh, well, it was free, so you could have gone, right? Wasn't it free? Oh, just well, register I, and go. I have to go back to Chicago. It was free, but I have, yeah. I have to go back to Chicago. Which, I mean, I guess I could have seen my family. Uh, yeah, it rained pretty good. Microsoft gave me two free drinks. Ooh, <laughs> Ooh. two drink minimum at Microsoft. And then sent me some place for dinner that wasn't serving dinner because it was too late. <laughs> Oh, good. They'll patch that at a future show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Where are we? Evolve. Did we already talk about Evolve? Yeah, we talked we about it talked enough. About sure. Uh, Wolfenstein, New Order. It's getting good reviews. Well. Here's Ham's review. It, yeah, yeah. Here's, here's my review. Foil, rush out and buy it before he gives you a review. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, yeah. <laughs> So, See, I've been I, waiting for this. I have not uh, looked at the time I've spent with, with Wolfenstein on Steam. I haven't seen that just yet, but uh, I think I've spent enough time to really good, give a, a good impression of it. And uh, there are a few different things I'd like to say. First, the, the game is very much a representation of id Tech 5, that, that engine that was used to build Rage, uh, is used to build this game in is reportedly being used to, to build the next Doom game. It is a, uh, this Wolfenstein is, is a example of the fundamental failure of the id Tech 5 engine. It was mm -hmm. a technological gamble that did not pay off. This idea that everything can be uniquely textured sounds great in theory, but if the execution is piss poor, <laughs> it's not worth it. You've got games that don't need to um, take great uh, a great amount of effort to to make something that looks beautiful and doesn't have the performance issues that Wolfenstein and Rage have had, both have had. There's, that stuff just doesn't exist and the game looks better without um, without this sort of bullet point of uniquely textured world. It's What's the point if the game looks terrible is what I'm trying to get at. Now, Wolfenstein does not look terrible, but it does not look great. And the, the game is about 44 gigs. Um, I, got, I got the DVD version of the game, 
to to help cut down on what I had to download. But uh, it comes on four DVDs. I, I installed the game using the four DVDs, and uh, Steam has to download at least ten extra gigs before I could even play the game. So that that is really kind of pissed me off to begin with. But I went in expecting not to be uh, to to be very underwhelmed. Um, I didn't expect an absolutely terrible game, but I did not expect anything great. And what I got so far is the game. Met your expectations. <laughs> it's 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 not terrible, and because it's not terrible, it 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 was above my expectations. So the game is okay. So it's, it's worth not, a seventy five, seventy, or eighty percent no. score. No, that's what it's getting. It, I'd peg it at a somewhere between a sixty and a seventy. Mm. It's it does nothing new, which is fine, um, but it um, and and it's a it's a, it seems like a solid game. But to not do anything new and to be solid, that's not good enough to be the price that it is sixty dollars. Mm. Nothing new should not um, should not be worth sixty dollars. That sixty dollars should be the price point of something that's that uh, that really pushes the genre for it in some respect. This game does not do that in any respect. It's it's sort of the standard running gun. Um, the the guns feel good. They feel fine. The AI is a little wonky at times. Um, I also want to know regarding the guns. Um, can you just like forever get shot and not die? Because that's what the videos made me think. No, I I, um, I immediately went to the the highest difficulty, hmm. so I'm not sure how much of a bullet sponge you can be, but um, the the health seems very ubiquitous. So the health packs you get. So um, even though I can die kind of fast, um, health packs are everywhere, hmm. and. I, there's some there's some times where I'm kind of in a sticky situation, but um, it's nothing ever to the point where I'm really scared. It's, it's sort of like okay, if I can get past this fight, there's there's bound to be health in the next room, or or I just maybe I'm not looking in the right corner, but I can get out of this fight. There's there's health somewhere I'm just not looking or, or seeing just yet. Um, so i i'm i'm waiting I'm it's waiting not for... overly challenging is what you're saying then yeah it's not overly challenging and i'm not sure if that was on purpose um because probably you it... can't make things when too was... hard nowadays yeah when was the last time you actually played a game that was challenging <clears throat> that's, that's, kind that's, of... what I was, that's what i was gonna ask like is it does it feel a very kind of safe attempt at a game so it's like oh we just need to kind of put something out um, let, let's let's make Wolfenstein, but let's let's do it so that it's a mid-level kind of meh game. Yeah. Or is it? Did they kind of do what it is kind of famous for, which is go? No, let's let's raise the bar, because I suspect it's the the first one. Yeah, the the bar has not been raised yeah. at all. It's it's sort of just let's just put this out. Let's do a, a better a better job than it did with with rage in in that respect i mean it is it is a better job it's better use of the engine no you don't uh, know that yet you haven't got to the end or lack <laughs> of <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna fight this boss right at the end and you'll be like oh cool i'm gonna get a cutscene no no you're, you're not the, the i mean the the game starts with an on rails sequence which I, I, I was like this is like this is not good to start <laughs> off this way um and it's it's very cutscene heavy, sort of almost like Max Payne three. Uh, just these unneeded cutscenes for certain Can't things. Play that. That's but cool. is it Metal Gear Solid five level of cutscene? No, because they aren't they aren't like so long. Four hours in there every thirty seconds. <laughs> it it just it seems like a game that almost was necessary to push Wolfenstein forward so that we can get out of the World War Two setting. Um, so, so it seems like a game that sort of... Stop, I'm not remembering last story. <laughs> How'd the last one end? I don't know. <laughs> oh, the, the last one didn't end with, with World War II ending. Um, but, but none of them really have ended with World War II ending. So it's, this seems almost like a way to say, okay, the Nazis are still here, but we're not in World War II anymore. And so going forward, 
we uh, we, we won't have to worry about tying anything specifically to World War II anymore. And okay, that's fine. It's 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 weird because I'm in this position where it's the game is 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 good because I expected it to be crap, but it's not great on its own. It's better than Rage, um, but it's it's still performance wise, it's not great, and uh, and it does nothing special to warrant its its release price tag. I'd say get this game if it's thirty bucks or less, uh, which it probably should be before the end of the year, and um, it's it's it's. It seems like a game that it's not really going to challenge you uh, more so than here's some guns and here's some Nazis and have a good time shooting them. I've got uh, a lot of games that I'm waiting for that price break to happen before I purchase. <laughs> here's, here's, some here's, the, here's the question, Every though. Did you, have, did you have fun playing it? So far, I can't really say yes. I can, I can, I can He's still no. playing it. Just, yeah. Yeah. The fact that he said so far means that he hasn't given he has, up. Yeah, yeah, but it also means he's had no fun so far. I can, I can, like, there are certain parts where I'm like, oh, that's that's cool. This gun feels feels kind of nice. And then, oh, that robot is really cool. But I haven't. Cool I haven't, doesn't equate to fun, though. Right, exactly. And I haven't gotten to a sequence yet where after I'm done with the sequence or as I'm struggling. To, to finish the, the this particular section of the game, I'm like, this is really fun. They're doing a great job here. That that just hasn't happened. And um, I mean, I can start to I can see it budding in some sections, but but the action ends before before it goes too far. Um, they they've done a nice job with with uh, some very very specific destructible objects. So sh shooting along corners of concrete pillars or um, boxes, the corners of boxes, so things start to kind of explode and, and, and fall apart. That's nice, and it sort of makes, you can, you can look at a scene and say, okay, a fight happened here, and, and that was cool as it happens, but it's, it's just not enough. It, it's just not enough, not so far. And um, I, I'd hate to say it this way, but I think, and I'm sure I've said this before, Syndicate, which I think was a very underrated game, Syndicate 2012, made by a lot of the guys uh, who, who worked on Wolfenstein, was a great example of using um, simple mechanics and combining them in very interesting ways to present challenges that were new and fresh and, and required some thought, and, but, but also sort of those skills that you would normally have when you play first-person shooters. Um, I expected to have that here. And, and I can see it. I can see that there are certain enemies who uh, might present a challenge if, if paired with other enemies. But so far, that pairing has not happened. And, and that's, that's been a shame. So I don't know how far I am into the game. Um, I guess as a point of reference, I'll say that I'm at a part in the game where I'm escaping from a prison. And that might be um, early in the game. I don't know. But for those out there who have played it or will play it, um, my my impressions so far are at that point where I'm escaping from a prison. <laughs> um, so on our like price scale that we sometimes use, how much do, do you say the game's worth? It's currently sixty dollars on Steam. Well, he said under thirty. Yeah, yeah. Well, thirty or less. He said thirty, 30 or less. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's that's where you should consider it. Um, at we should put bucks? this on a page somewhere. No, I don't know. Twenty Unless people really want to care to read it. <laughs> at twenty bucks, yeah, everyone is easy to get hold of. <laughs> must buy at twenty. At thirty, consider it. Anything above thirty, do not. Hmm. And um, I, I suspect that by this time next week, I'll have finished the game, and uh, and then I'll sort of give the, the final sort of overall impression of, of what I thought. Um, I might reduce the difficulty a little bit too, just so I can go a bit um, a bit faster with it because I have died a number of times but that was again that was because of it wasn't necessarily due to lack of skill it was just like oh there's there's more health around here somewhere I'm just not eyeing just yet um, it's we'll see how it turns out so far it's okay don't expect okay. anything special <laughs> All right. Uh, now that we've uh, 
got these two Canadians on board with their glasses. Hey, hey. <laughs> You're Canadian now. You've been there for no, more than two years. <laughs> <laughs> My blood has been replaced with bacon. You're both wearing you black go. shirts. You're both wearing... <laughs> glasses and and headsets, so you're called. Actually, you're both yeah, that, Canadian. That's a, that's a good point. I, I have been. If uh, I'm, I'm wearing the glasses, though, I don't know what. It looks like you were wearing the glasses and someone bitch slapped you. <laughs> well, here's the thing, though, right? So, to start from the beginning, the, these are um, Strider is modeling the uh, correct way to wear these. Um, <laughs> these are because he's got a normal size head. No scope. <laughs> So they're no scope. Um, I would. I don't know. You call them gaming and uh, gaming glasses. glasses. Yeah. Um, so Strider has a pair. He's wearing them out there. You can see. Um, I said to set. You know, he had a spare pair. So I said, okay, well, send them to me because I don't wear glasses at all. I don't require them. I don't wear contacts. So I thought it'd be interesting. Video just took a shit again. I know. Stupid <laughs> Skype video. It, I just see it popping in and out all the time. Um, so I said, okay, send me a pair. And I'll, I'll see what they're like because I don't wear glasses at all, so it'll be weird for me to wear. Um, and this is going to be helpful because the video is down. Can we fly that back You up? have to restart it. Yeah, there you go. Now it's gone. Oh, Jesus Christ. Fucking Skype. <laughs> I mean, I, I love you, Skype. Uh, so, <laughs> so I got them and I tried them on without a headset on. You know, I just put them on. And I will admit they are com more comfortable than I thought. I expected them to be kind of awkward and and <laughs> that's, that's, that's completely opposite from the way you're wearing them. Do they well, look I'm comfortable? Getting, I'm getting, wait, I'm getting to that. <laughs> okay, so this this is what they're like. You can see the, the the tint on them. That should show up on the video in a minute. Um, here's the problem I have with them. My headset. I can see Strider is wearing them with his headset. Here's the problem I have. I can't put these on while wearing my headset. If I do this, so I'd have to do this. <laughs> Okay, so I got them on, and then if I do this, which is what Strider's doing, I assume, he's got it under the kind of the ear. Yes, they are underneath. But the problem with this now is I have a gap here and here. And right between his ears, he has this gap. This yeah. is what he's saying. <laughs> that, is a, that is a defect of the Logitech headset. Yeah. The Logitech so, headset is not designed for the glasses. Now, what you can do, because I tried these with my Logitech set, is just tip the ears up so they go above the, the muffler part. Yeah, which I did, because Aaron, just for the, for the, for the people at home, uh, the gap, <laughs> gap caused this is I can now, it's not covering my ears fully, so I can hear myself talking louder for a start, and the sound isn't as good because there's not a seal... Now, what Strider's is saying to do is kind of do this, so do that, where they're, they're sort of sitting above the, the, the cut, so they're sitting on top of the, of the headset itself. Problem is with that is it forces the glass to be at an angle on my face. So now I feel like Geordie LaForge out of Star Trek, because <laughs> these are right up against my eyes. Yeah, right? pull, them, pull them forward a bit then, you tool. <laughs> yeah, and they, they can't put them down any further. Now I feel like like Stevie Wonder and just like, yeah. <laughs> but because they're an angle, it's it kind of the, this the screen looks weird to me because it's not it's not flat. Um. So yeah, that's kind of from I haven't I've worn them a little bit without a headset on just to kind of see what they're like. I I guess they do help a little bit. I don't know. I don't, I've never really had a problem with looking at screens for a long period of time. In 10 years, I'm going to get that played back to me and go, ha, 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 ha look at your eyes now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go a little further with my review. I've been wearing these for, um, I've been wearing these for three weeks now when, uh, when I sit in front, of the, in front of my basically tanning booth of, of monitors I've got here. Um, I do all of, my, all of my work is in front of computer monitors that I do. And uh, obviously, I, I love playing games. So the first thing that I noticed uh, when I put them on was, was the tint. And it took a little bit to get used to everything being slightly tinted yellow. Yeah. Uh, but that said, it I found actually it does reduce eye strain. It does, um, in, in my opinion... 
um, make me less fatigued after after doing it, uh, like after sitting in front of whether it's drafting for eight hours or or you know a, a gaming session that I don't really have a lot of time for these days, but you know a four or five hour gaming session. Um, it I was skeptical and I was skeptical about the gunners and the reason I was skeptical about the gunners when when we first saw them was the price tag nothing you know tinted glasses aren't going to be worth two and three hundred dollars um, so the first thing I did was I spoke with my sister-in-law optometrist is there any truth to this is there any um, Don't put those eye drops in your eyes. <laughs> yeah, I know that's all I think of. <laughs> um, but it's it's uh, you know, is there any truth to this? And she said, oddly enough, that it is a very new thing um, that they're they're figuring out that this UV blue light that comes from all electronic devices, be it your, be it your monitors, be it your handheld devices, uh, watching television. Uh, even even the lights around you are putting off this harmful blue light, and and it they're seeing now an increase in degenerative eye. Uh, it's not really a disease, but they're seeing eye degeneration, the quality of vision. It is so much increased as the generations are are getting younger and younger because younger people are staring at these devices more and more and more. Most op, uh, optometrists now offer glasses with a coating on lens. them that will mm-hmm. block um, the blue light and and UV. And essentially, these glasses are a cheaper version of gunners um, in, in the sense that they're more affordable, whereas gunners are, you know, $200 or I think their, their entry pair is 130 so it's not these like you're going to buy these, stare at the screen, and the UV parts of it just going to go right through them and make your eyes worse, right? It's not like What's a that? fake coating. It's not like, you know, you go out and you, go, you let's say you go to the uh, flea market and you buy sunglasses and look up at the sun. Yes. You assume that they're protecting your eyes just because they look like glasses that Who would protect your eyes. Who when they're wearing <laughs> any kind of sunglasses? <laughs> if you've gone to the flea market, you understand. They all look yeah. at the sun. Yeah, no, but even if you spent like $300 <laughs> on sunglasses, you're still not supposed to look at the sun. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Are they real or they're fake? Not welding can we, can glasses. we tell? Yeah, I just wear a sleeping no, they, mask. They are. They're certified, they're certified to UV 400, which is okay. what... Which is what quality sunglasses, not not knockoffs from the from the markets in China, are. So they're UV 400, which are mm-hmm. it's it's blocking that UV light that actually causes eye disease, and it also blocks the blue light, which they found you know being exposed to blue light disrupts sleep patterns, uh, causes eye fatigue uh, and eye strain. So yeah, I for for twenty dollars I see them being an absolute uh, an absolute bargain and honestly i it's i turn my computer on and put the glasses on it's the first thing i do now it's it's insane how how much it's it's uh it's changed the way i approach things i find that i can i can um i don't know foil i know you're somewhat of an insomniac anyways but uh i know a lot of people uh, myself included, I would play on the computer and it'd be like, oh, it's bedtime and, and turn it off and go to bed. And then I'd have trouble falling asleep. Whereas now, because yep. it's it's blocking that blue light, mm-hmm. it's not interrupting my sleep pattern. So it's like, you know what? I'm tired. I should go to bed. And I go to bed and I'm able to fall asleep relatively quickly now. I'm not, my eyes aren't thinking it's daytime. It's not daylight and it's not disrupting my my thought process of a, of a sleep pattern. Because that's essentially what that blue light does: is it it modifies your the way your brain is taking a look at what's around. Um, so yeah, I've I've actually found it quite good, and the fact that it is a um, affordable solution um, right now they're not available in prescriptions from uh, from NoScope. Uh, whether they're going to advance that in the future or not i don't know um but yeah and and i had them i had actually took them over to my my sister-in-law and she 
she uh, put them in all their funky optometrist machines and said, no, they're they're doing exactly what they say they're doing. So they're blocking UV 400 and they're uh, blocking the blue light. So my thought was I could actually maybe try these at work because um, I, like you, spend ridiculous amounts of time staring at computer screens. Mm-hmm. Um, but maybe I'll just wait until I'm actually back in my own office before I start wandering around the... Uh, but I don't know it I get I do get a kind of lesser I know what you're saying about the whole you know you've been on the computer for five six seven hours um and you get that weird kind of it's not not a strain but your eyes kind of your eyes get tired I, I guess as yep. well um and I have noticed while well, the times I have been wearing them I haven't got that so much that being said I haven't actually worn them like continuously because mainly because of the headset issue, because if I'm on my computer here, I have this on. Um, what I should maybe try is just spend a day where I'm just, if I, you know, if I work from home or something, just wear them while I'm doing that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't typically wear glasses at, at all, even sunglasses, so it does, I still kind of am aware that I'm wearing glasses and it feels a little bit weird to me. But I would assume that, like, continued use, that would go away eventually. Because I'm just kind of aware that I got something on my face and, like, on my nose, so I keep looking down. Okay, so it sounds like, like you're saying, ergonomically, they aren't that great. Uh, um, I mean, they're comfortable. If I take my headset off and put them on, I was surprised at how comfortable. I was expecting them to be, like, all pointy by the on the arms and like wearing them for a couple of minutes would hurt but they don't um but they i would suggest that if i'm gonna you know suggest an improvement for them is something to compensate for headsets okay and no i'm not a glasses veteran i've never i, I don't need glasses i don't wear them i i don't even wear sunglasses I'm still not sure about this fatigue thing, and I feel like I need to experiment with that idea. You know, I don't feel fatigued now wearing, not wearing them. So I'm not sure what it would feel like while after wearing them. I wonder. Well, I wonder if that's. Well, no, I was gonna say I wonder if that's because, like, examples being like I can't if I'm if I'm at work and I'm coding, I can't, I cannot code on a white background with text. Because after after an hour or so, it burn is my eyes start to hurt. So I, I code on a black background with with white with uh, not white text but colored text, um, and I, I would assume it's something through that. It's the way the colors. Um, I know there's definitely something in it for people that have um, dyslexia, where certain colored tinted glasses make it a lot a hell of a lot easier for them to read and and write. Like so it's something to do with the uh, the UV reflections and whatever. I, I don't know the science behind it, but. Well, Strider seems to have a, uh, after being suspicious, has, has a generally positive review of the glasses. I mean, I'm probably not going to wear them as much because, A, the headset thing. Yeah, but if you're not, like, I don't game with my headset unless I'm I'm chatting with you guys uh, while gaming. But if I'm, if I'm gaming myself, you know, I play through the speakers and... And have the subwoofer cranking and scare the shit out of the wife upstairs. <laughs> it's, uh, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't uh, create any pressure at all. But what I I do know what I'm talking about. The, uh, the I can't uh, do that because you know yeah. apartment building. This is this is this is part of the reason why I switched away from the Logitech headsets. Is their ear pads are so large and they are also pressed so tightly against your the sides of your head. The it's the spring on top that is that is actually compressing everything really really in there and any type of glasses even just my normal vision glasses when i was wearing them i had a problem where where it wasn't comfortable the whole setup wasn't comfortable i moved away from that i've gotten uh i've gotten this headset which i have no idea what the fuck it is frost blue steel some sort series, of it's steel series looks, yeah, uh, looks siberia like something he can't hear us say anything you want oh. Oh. steel series <laughs> <laughs> so I am so. Um, so, but yeah, it's. Uh, I I really I really, from from I, I went from skeptic 
and and anybody that knows me, I am a fucking skeptic about everything. And uh, uh, it, it, I found them to be fantastic. So, yeah, they get they get a they get my stamp of approval for for whatever that's worth. That's the thing that worries me about these is I always have my headset on and I so will sit I. here I like, all yeah. day. I mean, a, a, a 12-hour stint of me sat at my desk on my day off is not unusual because I'm a lazy fuck. But so, <laughs> that's, that's a so long what time I would, having what these I would glasses suggest and a then, headset. Yeah, if this is if that's a concern for you, put on a pair of of um, straight-backed um, sunglasses. Are they uncomfortable with your headset? Not particularly. Then Maybe after a long period of time. Then. Yeah, you're not going to have a problem with these then. That's that's essentially what it is. Is I is, mean, for twenty bucks. I'm Those three D glasses. Buy them and try them. Yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the whole world is. Now we've all got glasses on. <laughs> yeah, I, I keep them here because my monitor is three D, but I just never use it. It's like the Blues Brothers show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. let's let's give it a go. I'll order some. If they're shit, I will hunt you down. Yeah. <laughs> I I I did I didn't really find a benefit playing first person shooters. I haven't uh I haven't uh done that uh, a lot with these glasses on though to formulate a that, that's a... not the that's not their main Yes, purpose, shut it. it. Shut it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I still got knifed by a, a bastard. <laughs> Fuck, you need a lot of pair of glasses to get better at first person yeah. shooters. <laughs> yeah, these glasses don't come with skills. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but anyways, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll be setting up uh, an affiliate link on our on the Mods Online and Mods On Air website, so we're probably just the Mods Online one, Foil. Doing what about them? Set Putting these on sale? affiliate link? Yeah, sure. Um, actually, we'll discuss it. It'll, you'll find it online. We'll make it available. Okay. Um, but yeah. yeah. Do they? That's the question. Do they come in different colored tints? These no. ones? No. No, um, because that's this is why? the tint that yeah. doesn't affect. the The tint is to create clarity with texts and and edging, and that's the same. If you put on if you put on say an orange tint and look at your monitor, you're actually going to find that black on white fuzzes out. It's it's this this tint, and there's a reason that this yellowish tint is used in hunting uh, glasses and things like that. It's because it creates the biggest clarity for the human. See, that's eye. what they that's what they remind me of, like the uh, the safety goggles you get if you go to a, like a range or something. And and that, and there's a reason for that. Like I said, it's 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 a clarity thing. So. Yeah, uh, I guess I'll, the only way that I can really use them though is if I put my contacts in. So I'll have to uh, do that and try these out. Why do you take your contacts out? Because they don't allow my my eyes to breathe. So after a while, it starts to really hurt. So you have mm. to buy better contacts, contacts. that'll like I leave mine in for a month. Yeah, well, that's what I would preferably like. But when I go to the to the doctor, they say, "Oh, here's a prescription for this particular brand." It's okay. Oh, fuck that. Okay. If you if you know your eye system. shape, do you know your prescription? Well, now we're gonna go off topic, and this <laughs> is because I have a sister. God. Because I have a sister in law as an optometrist, I know this. If you know your prescription, which essentially is your your strength of your you know the plus minus. Yeah, it's written down somewhere. And then your eye shape. Which is going to be the diameter, and mm -hmm. the the convexness, concave, convex. I guess if your eyes are concave, something's wrong. So the <laughs> convexness. Get punched in the you other can, side of your you head. You can order them online. <laughs> Without a prescription. You just need. Or, or, you you I mean, just need you don't to know need what your prescription is, yes, and then okay. you just order them so, direct from Accuview mm -hmm. or whatever the heck it is. That's right. Okay. I can say that because I would love something that can keep in for a month and not feel like I need to take them out before yep. I die. Yeah, no, <laughs> they're they're fantastic because they're they're breathable contacts. So, 
Okay. So that's the only reason I don't I don't keep them in. Oh, now shit's beeping. That's me, sorry. Oh, is it? okay, good. You write me, I'm gonna write you back. So expect a beep. <laughs> yeah, but if it at least you wrote it on one I can read. <laughs> beeping on beeping on the other page is like oh, I can't read that. <laughs> We went pretty full, uh, pretty long on our show today. Uh, do you, I think we should at least t touch on the next one, right? Don't you? Aren't you guys excited for the Batman uh, Arkham Knight new game? Not at all. I am. I am. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm trying not to because yeah, it may be terrible. Um, but as a Batman fan, I kind of can't help it. Um, It'll be a case of, yes, I'll be buying this, but it'll be whether I'm happy about it or not. <laughs> because Mainly because yeah. um, the last one, Origins, was fucking horrible. It wasn't just horrible. It was fucking horrible. Yeah, it was <laughs> just <laughs> some real feeling about that. It just, it just wasn't... It was like a cookie cutter of the last three games. Um... In, in terms of like, oh, this is the boss battle. I remember this boss battle from the first game. It's a different character, but you've done, you have to do the exact same thing. Uh, yeah, that's bad. Mm. I considered it during the Humble Bundle sale, Arkham Origins, because the price was less than $10. I think it was just nine. And then I said to myself, wait a minute, this has all sorts of DLC for this game. Let me go yes. and, and see what the price of the DLC is. And I would have spent to get the complete game about thirty, at least thirty bucks. So I said, "I'll wait till a game of the year edition is on sale." Mm. Honestly, I would just skip it, or just skip it. And this. Yeah, this one, this one, this one is rock steady again. They, they they've come back to do this one. Yeah, this this I'm excited for. Yeah, my my concern though is in this video you see it. There's the Batmobile. Uh, I believe there's a shot. Yeah, there it is, where it's going around the tunnel or whatever. People are freaking out. Oh my god! You know we got to try that. That concerns me, mainly because I don't want to have to do a whole bunch of shitty driving missions. <laughs> It'll be on rails. Because well, that's the saying. It's not the saying. You can okay. have free, free drive around the like Grand Theft Auto style. If that's the case, they're definitely going to be driving missions. Exactly. I he hates Grand driving Theft Auto. Missions. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I had read that, that the Riddler puzzles of the previous games had been done away with in favor of racing courses. Uh, yeah, and that didn't rub me the right way, but that could be wrong. And it's still in development, so that, that could be reversed. For the, for, the the fans, right. for the fans, Kevin Conroy is back as, as Batman, which is awesome because he is Batman. Um, he was not part of the Origins game, which also kind of pushed it down. It wasn't as good. Um, I'm trying to remember what else about this game. Rocksteady are doing it. Um, it's being tagged as next gen, whatever the hell that means these days. <laughs> what does it really mean, anyways? Nobody knows anymore. <laughs> Is it expected? Which means it still would run on my PC anyway. Yeah. Yeah, it means it's still two generations behind the PC. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that term needs to go away. Yeah, it does. It's it's a term now that's just come to mean we're going to oh, put out on your console. Someone's phoning in! <laughs> <laughs> the switchboard's are lying enough. <laughs> Is this expected to be out later this Stop year? Stop ringing. Um, October? I want to say, I think. I could be wrong about that. Oh. <laughs> and the fax machine keeps ringing. <laughs> yeah, October 14th this year. So I guess we can look to that soon. <laughs> Alright, anything else you guys want to talk about? Uh, I did want to mention, in case Morpheus, Morpheus, you didn't see it, Wolfenstein does suffer from the texture pop-in issue if you turn your head too fast. Oh, uh, yeah. that's, that's... No, done. That's Not gonna no, yeah. that's me out. Because <laughs> I is... hit, like, that drove me crazy in in Rage. Did it make you rage? <laughs> uh, yeah, it did. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
that's that's all I could think of to say. Anything else? All right. No. Good show. Wrap it up. Yeah. All right. So we'll be back again next week. I want to thank our hosts for taking the time out to chat today. Welshy, thank you for joining us today. Mm-hmm. And Strider, thank you for joining us today. Hey, it's always an adventure. <laughs> uh, Han, thank you for being with us. Thanks for having me. And Breezy, thank you for being with us today. Cheers for having me. Yeah, so we'll be, like I said, we'll be back again next week with some uh, stuff to talk about. In the meantime, go enjoy your weekend, long weekend if it's in the U.S. Play some games, buy some gunners when we get to that affiliate link, and we'll talk to you. Take care. Thanks for watching this week, and come back next week when we will broadcast another live show. Details for this and all past episodes can be found at modsonair.com. We welcome your feedback via email at mailbag at modsonair.com. And please consider subscribing to modsonline.com to support our show. The opinions expressed by individuals on this program are not necessarily the opinions of our sponsors, owners, or partners. So, what if the Little Mermaid was a shark? Ha! <laughs> I am a shark. Isn't that neat? You couldn't name something I couldn't eat. Wouldn't you think I'm the shark? The shark who's ate everything. Fish and a crab, dolphin and skate. One time I ate an old license plate. Looking at me, you'd think, sure, he's ate everything. I had tuna and humpbacks plenty. I've been swimmers and surfers galore. You want to know how kids taste? I've been 20, but who cares? No big deal. I want more. I want to eat what the people eat. I want to try an ice cream sundae, cheese and wine appetizers, a chicken main accord. I'll even try stuff that people won't try. Delicious penis, swans, and earthworms. I dream of eating a... Again. Oh, I am a shark. It's so incomplete. I don't need clothes. Just give me some feet so I can walk. No, make that run. Eat everything. What would I give if I could live as a food junkie? Or hell, I would hate to be able to say I've tried eating shampoo. I were you, here's what I do. Go to a zoo and eat a monkey. Please the condemn, but I eat them. Eat their cop cars too. I'm ready to bite all that people bite. Even the things that people don't bite. What fire and how does it what's the word? A shark that can only eat half of the earth. Duck underneath with 500 teeth. Shark on land, like a T Rex. I wonder yeah. what the chance is. That is a terrifying cult. Land shark! <laughs> <laughs> That's a film right there. <laughs> That's the Sharknado sequel. Yeah. Land sharks. Alright <laughs> yeah. guys. Enjoy the weekend. Yeah, that's it. Alright. That's all folks. Get out. Bye, Twitchers. <laughs> <laughs>